Hey everybody, it's Aunt Bibi. Today is Wednesday, um, June 12th, 2019. I'm Barb Hammer. So I want to talk today uh, once again about Bernie Sanders. And there are a couple of themes I want to talk about and kind of tie things together. Um, there were some things that I needed, that I had uh, left out of my last video. So I've done, I've already done three videos about Bernie. So going back, let's see, I did one not long after he had announced his, that his candidate, that he was a candidate for president for 2020. It was this one, Bernie's 2020 sheepdog and jackass show. And I talked about how, well, I mean, I had been heavily involved in Bernie's campaign and I can't, I couldn't believe that people were getting excited again about Bernie after what happened in 2016. Um, so I, I noticed that he had wiped his, uh, old website, his old campaign website clean of all of his old policy positions. And I was, uh, sort of reminding people about his position on, uh, open borders and comprehensive immigration reform. And then I've done a couple more recently about Bernie talking again about, oh, Bernie's, um, new campaign website is up and his, he has a uh, new, uh, policy positions, particularly on, um, comprehensive, he's supporting comprehensive immigration for reform wholeheartedly. He's removed the, uh, the page about open borders where he talks about the problem of un uncontrolled immigration. And uh, so I did this one too, uh, Bernie Stops Pretending to be Indie, comes out as a DNC show. And actually, I left out something Scott Creighton on the Church Dog 42 channel had reminded me of. He had done a video way back talking about how Bernie was uh, uh, already obviously in the pocket of the DNC. And actually, when I think back to 2016, there were signs then that he was. Um, so um, there are a couple of, uh, so as I said, there's a couple of themes I want to talk about. Uh, populism and, uh, so populism and censorship. Those are the two themes I want to talk about in regards to Bernie. So, um, uh, so there were a couple of tweets that I saw today. One was from this account. Um, so, uh, Laura sex angel, she's a very nice lady and occasionally she has something interesting and she tagged me and others in, uh, with this article about Bernie Sanders, uh, Bernie Sanders' definition of democratic socialism explained. So she tagged me, um, this is my Twitter account. I go by, I'm at Babette Martel, which is just a French version of, of my real name, Barbara Hammer. And I am a uh, random, inter right now I'm random interim Afro-Cuban uh, Prime Minister of Canada, because I live in Canada. I am an American in Canada. I have dual citizenship. Uh, so there's that tweet. There's this tweet. So that's about that. Actually, that article is about populism when I look through it. Or that's the uh, information I got from that article. Um, and then there was this tweet tweet from Jared Beck AI bot. So Jared Beck, the lawyer for the DNC fraud lawsuit, he has been permanently suspended from Twitter. And this is um, someone who's running an account that sort of says similar things to what Jared Beck <laughs> would have said on Twitter. And he tweeted out this article, uh, Koch brothers team up with George Soros, Patreon and Airbnb to fight online extremism. So that's about censorship. So pay, uh, populism and censorship. So the Bernie article, uh, what was interesting here is that um, this is an article about a recent speech 
Bernie made at George Washington University. But what I found that was interesting is there's this mention of uh, uh, he's fighting what he sees as a global rise in authoritarianism, one embodied by Trump in the United States. And this um, paragraph in particular, so this is in quotes, so Bernie said this. So um, authoritarian leaders redirect popular anger about inequality and declining economic conditions into violent rage against minorities, whether they are immigrants, racial minorities, religious minorities, or the LGBT community, Sanders said. And to suppress dissent, they are cracking down on democracy and human rights. Okay, that's kind of weird. So um, Bernie, Bernie, Bernie has definitely got the gotten the DNC memo. So he demonizes Trump. Trump is the authoritarian to be feared. But what I've said before is actually the Democrats. The Democratic Party is using Trump as right cover to impose authoritarianism themselves in the form of censorship and stripping away other rights. Um, but this, this uh, paragraph is very disturbing. So Bernie is, Bernie is also smearing populism. And he, his 26th king. 2016 campaign was based on populism and he's still sort of a populist but he is now smearing populism he's smearing movements like the yellow vest movement he is smearing his 2016 supporters including uh some of those who um ended up voting for donald trump in the general election in 2016. um yeah so bernie is smearing and he, uh, Bernie, uh, supposedly, they claim that Bernie had a problem with minorities and wasn't getting minority support. There was this myth that most of Bernie's supporters were white males, Bernie bros. And I used to joke that I'm a Bernie bro. And, you know, I knew what was going on in the 2016, 2016 campaign. And it was just disgraceful, disgusting. And I learned my lesson. I don't vote anymore, period. I'm not supporting any candidates at all. I don't even, I don't even support third party, nothing. Uh -uh. Okay, so Bernie's smearing populism. This is not the first time that Bernie has smeared his supporters. And I will show you. Um, uh, yeah, so... This, I'll show you. This is a very funny video from Gerard Hayes uh, channel from February of 2018. And it's we Russian trolls, huh? So uh, Gerard put his face in a troll doll with a rainbow sweater and pink hair and a Russian fur cap. And this was after Bernie had been on a Sunday morning news show, Meet the Press, and Bernie claimed Bernie claimed that uh, when Hillary Clinton got the nomination, um, Russians rushed to the Bernie Sanders pages and groups and were spreading lies about Hillary, Hillary Clinton, that they were smearing Hillary Clinton. So Gerard was upset and he's kind of mocking. It's very funny. So Bernie was calling his own supporters in 2016 Russian trolls. Those weren't Russians on the Facebook pages and groups. Those were Bernie Sanders supporters who were very upset that Bernie didn't get the nomination. And they didn't want to vote for Hillary, including me. I didn't vote for Hillary. I voted for Dr. Jill Stein which I regret that because <laughs> she worked with the Podestas. Anyway, so Bernie's yet again, Bernie is smearing his supporters, calling them. So, you know, a way of smearing populism is saying it's something foreign, it's something extremist, it's Russian, whatever, 
you know, Putin, they say, oh, Putin's an authoritarian leader and it's just disgusting. So it's not, to, we shouldn't be surprised. Um, so Bernie has been in the DNC pocket all along, but it's just getting really obvious now. Um, Bernie actually had a number of people in his uh, 2016 campaign who were Hillary Clinton people or um, Democratic Party establishment figures. Uh, I remember back in 2016, so there was a young man named Nico House, and he was working for Bernie's campaign in, North, in South Carolina. He noticed that there were a number of Hillary Clinton staffers running Bernie's campaign in South Carolina, and they were sabotaging it. And um, Bernie didn't do well in South Carolina, and they were saying, oh, it's because he can't appeal to minorities there. And that was bullshit. Uh, yeah, so Bernie's campaign was being deliberately sabotaged. Um, there were Hillary Clinton staffers embedded in his campaign there. And Nico uh, was disturbed by that so much so that he went to Jared and Elizabeth Beck and he told them about what was going on. And that was the basis, the original basis for the DNC fraud lawsuit. Um, I also remember that there, uh, there were other like uh, Democratic Party establishment staffers on Bernie's campaign. And one was, I think his name was Ted Devine. And Ted Devine, um, he helped Bernie put together this campaign ad, which was a wonderful campaign ad. And when I saw it, I thought, well, Bernie's for sure he's going to be the next president because it was a very down to earth, very populist uh, message. Um, so it was just called America. And the music was Simon and Garfunkel's song, America. And they produced this for the Iowa caucuses. And I think the Iowa caucuses were in March of 2016. I can't remember exactly, I think. Or earlier, maybe, uh, they, they made, yeah. Or maybe it was February. I can't, I'm sorry. I can't remember. Anyways, very good, uh, ad and it, all the shots are in Iowa and, and most of the people in the ad, at least in the beginning are white, you know, they're farmers and, you know, it's very populous, this whole, the imagery and the message. And, uh, as you get, you know, I don't know, very enthusiastic crowds. Um, so Ted Devine, who was a democratic party establishment figure, he helped Bernie put this, he had, he put this together for Bernie his campaign. So Bernie's campaign, even in 2016, was being managed by Democratic Party establishment figures and Hillary Clinton staffers. Um, actually, so uh, Scott Creighton did a video not long after Bernie had announced, and he talked about Bernie's new campaign manager, who was Faiz Shakir. Oh, wait, who, who is Faiz Shakir? And Scott was familiar with Faiz Shakir because he, um, Faiz Shakir, let's see, Faiz Shakir works, is a Podesta figure, actually. Faiz Shakir worked, he actually worked on Bernie's uh, campaign a little, he helped, he sort of advised Bernie a little bit in his 2016 campaign. And so that's kind of questionable. Anyway, so Scott was familiar with Faya Shakir because Faya Shakir has worked for John Podesta's um, Center for American Progress, which runs the website Think Progress, which is sort of a focus group and uh, Scott was familiar with Faya Shakir because Faya Shakir is very, uh, 
he believes strongly in the power of censorship. So Faiz Shakir would personally censor comments, uh, references to the 2000 election and how that was thrown for George W. Bush. Any questions about the election, any election fraud then, they were wiped off the site. Uh, so Scott was involved in that Think Progress site and Faiz Shakir um, would wipe out any uh, questioning of Barack Obama's background. So Faiz Shakir was involved in Bernie's campaign a little bit in 2016, and he is now uh, Bernie's campaign manager. So there's a, a Hillary Clinton person, John Podesta, uh, person connected to John Podesta, who is a Hillary Clinton crony, um, involved, who's running Bernie's campaign, 2020 campaign. Um, so there we're coming to the theme of censorship. What else did I want to say about Fai Shakir? Ah, yeah. So Fai Shakir, now Scott mentioned it, that, uh, I'll, this in his video too, but it's interesting. So Fai Shakir, oh yeah, Fai Shakir was also involved in, he was until he joined Bernie's campaign to run, to be his manager. Um, he was the head of the, a the American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU from 2017 until recently, until he became Bernie's campaign manager. Um, so when he was with the ACLU, he created something called People, peoplepower.org, and uh, which promoted the idea of freedom cities to support uh, illegal uh, immigrants. And um, so it was all about resisting Trump's immigration laws. So controlled immigration, really. Um, he also, what was that? Oh yeah, up here. Okay, sorry. So uh, when he was with the ACLU, he objected to Trump's uh, 2018 State of the Union address because he used the word America too much, he said, and he said that was exclusionary and made people feel left out. So he's sort of suggesting illegal immigrants would not feel included in America. So Faiz Shakir, uh, he has a habit of smearing populism and uh, it's not a surprise that Bernie's position on uh, immigration has changed and he no longer has a problem with open, well, not open, uh, Bernie wants comprehensive immigration reform. So this is about letting illegal immigrants in to provide cheap labor for corporations. So Fai Shakir is not, he, Fai Shakir, so my two themes, populism and censorship. So Fai Shakir smears populism. So Bernie is smearing populism now. Bernie's got the message from the DNC. And Fai Shakir is serious about censorship. So this tweet from the Jared AI bot. Um, I clicked on that article. So this is about censorship. And uh, so there's this new organization, which I kind of showed. Uh, there's a new, there's an organization that was started after the Charlottesville um, Unite the Right uh, Charlottesville in August 2017, there was a Unite the Right rally, and then there were counter protesters. So, the Unite the Right was a group of supposedly neo Nazis, KKK, Ku Klux Klan, I don't know, extremists. And the police were ordered 
had to stand down and um, there was a car that plowed into a group of counter protesters and a young woman was killed and many people were injured. It's very questionable, all the events um, that day. And Scott has actually talked a lot about that and has gotten in trouble over that and is being sued over that. So, um, this article is about a, the, uh, the organization, the After Charlottesville Project. So they're holding their second summit in July in San Francisco near Silicon ba Valley, incidentally. And, uh, and at this one, they're going to be tech companies. Um, So I'll just read this. Um, oops, hang on. Let me see if I can highlight this. Ah. Ah. So the Koch brothers are teaming up with tech companies, universities, and other fellow bil billionaires to combat online extremism. On July 17th, the After Charlottesville Project will host its second summit in San Francisco, San Francisco California. Founded in the aftermath of the deadly 2017 white supremacist attacks in Virginia, the conference brings together political and business leaders to discuss solutions for curbing political terrorism. While last year's gathering in Missouri involved grassroots and city response initiatives, the focus of this year's summit will involve the private tech sector and best practices on the fight against hate and extremism online according to the event's press release. Representatives for the Koch Brothers Institute and the Anti-Defamation League will join executives from tech companies, which currently include Eventbrite, Mozilla, Pinterest, Patreon, and Airbnb. Now more than ever is the time to create communities that value diversity, inclusivity, and positive change. Michael Signer, the former mayor of Charlottesville, Virginia, and the founder and chair of the Communities Overcoming Extremism Project said in a statement, we're excited to assemble with these forward thinking tech leaders to explore what positive outcomes we can gain from an event full of powerful conversations. This pat, okay. They're talking about some recent censorship on YouTube. So it's all about censorship. And it's interesting who's involved in this group. And I can't remember if, it, ah, yeah, okay. So you can see, so among the groups involved are here, the Center for American Progress. So that's uh, Faye Shakir's old uh, boss, the Podesta. So John Podesta runs Center for American Progress. So Faye Shakir worked for that group and he worked for Think Progress, which is part of Center for American Progress. And yeah, so there's a lot of, let's see, wait a minute. Oh, I think I highlighted that on here. Yeah, so this is interesting. So then it says, this is the flyer about the After Charlottesville Project. And... So down here, it says a second summit will be held in 2019 when private sector leaders will address ways in which they can help their local communities overcome extremism and promote America's foundational principles of justice and equality. The summit will showcase efforts of entrepreneurs and corporations to combat hate, extremism, and bigotry in order to promote healing and overcoming and overcome extremism. The project will in conclude with the release of a community's overcoming extremism podcast and white paper report, which will codify the summit learnings. After the culmination of the project, there will be recommended action items and resources for communities to unite, combat hate, heal from extremism and safeguard our democracy. So, the big uh, boogeyman is uh, white supremacists, um, Nazis, hate speech, and um, 
So it's the Anti-Defamation League who is running this, uh, the After Charlottesville Project. So the Anti-Defamation League fights uh, anti-Semitism. And really, I think what they're trying to fight with this effort at censoring is um, uh, clearly uh, it's not, they're trying to fight any criticism of Israel, really. And uh, they're fighting the BDS movement. And they will call any criticism of Israel as anti-Semitic. Any support for Palestinian rights is anti-Semitic, even though the Palestinians are Semites, actually. So this is part of, so um, Faiz Shakir, he's connected to the Center for American Progress which is part of this uh, new, uh, the After Charlottesville project. Uh, Fai Shakir is Bernie Sanders' is, uh, ca new campaign manager. And this is all about uh, smearing populism, censoring any dissent. Um, and if you have a populist, um, so Bernie is, he's, he's smearing the Yellow Vest movement, any populist movement. He's smearing his 2016 supporters um who supported him because of his populist message he's called them russian trolls um so bernie's got a, a john podesta figure running his campaign and uh, bernie actually had uh clinton people um uh, involved in his 2016 campaign he had the democratic party establishment people involved in his campaign. Faiz Shakir, his current campaign manager, was involved in his 2016 campaign. Um, so Trump is being demonized and authoritarian, even though he ran as a populist. He's not a populist pre pre uh, president. So Bernie, even back in 2016, his campaign was infiltrated. It's even more infiltrated now, his 2020 campaign. And the, I think, I think that's about it. So Bernie is definitely DNC, but he's really smearing, he's really some smearing supporters. And, uh, but it's not the first time he's, he's done this before. So uh, that's all I want to say now for now. So, you know, if you're supporting Bernie, you're just supporting the Democratic Party establishment. And Bernie, I don't know. I doubt that Bernie will get uh, the nomination. It'll probably be Joe Biden. It'll probably be Bernie and uh, the other candidates drumming up support for the Democrats and then shifting it to Joe Biden or something, uh, something ridiculous like that. Anyway, that's all That's all I want to say for now. So thanks for listening. Thanks for your patience. And I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.